Hey everyone, welcome back. As we get closer and closer to the beginning of the 2024 primary season, there seems to be a bit of a theme developing on the GOP side, and that theme is loyalty, specifically loyalty pledges. The RNC is requiring one for anyone who wants to participate in their first debate, and the Florida Republican Party has just added a loyalty pledge as a requirement to get your name on the ballot. The Republican Party in Florida said that they are adding this requirement in order to mirror the national GOP, so I wouldn't be too surprised if other state parties follow suit and add a loyalty pledge requirement as a part of gaining ballot access in various Republican primaries across the country. Now, this is the first time that the Republican Party has ever done something like this, so it begs two questions. Number one, what are they worried about? And number two, is a loyalty pledge going to be an effective way to prevent whatever this is from happening? The GOP is leaning into these loyalty pledges as a way to prevent further fracturing of their party's political unity. And this fracturing started back in 2016 when Donald Trump became the head of the party. If you remember the convention that year, Ted Cruz showed some rare political backbone when he refused to endorse Donald Trump at the convention. Now that didn't last for long, but it was a sign of things to come, as over the next two years of unified Republican control of government, a lot of GOP infighting prevented them from accomplishing most of their major policy goals, including repealing and replacing Obamacare. And even after Trump left office, the infighting has continued. Donald Trump has been constantly feuding with other Republicans, Marjorie Taylor Greene was just recently kicked out of the Freedom Caucus, and there was even a physical fight between members of the Michigan GOP. So, yeah, the Republicans are not in a very unified place. The reason that national Republicans are so concerned about this lack of unity is that they really have no margin for error in the 2024 election cycle. If they lose any Republican votes, it's very likely that they will lose a number of key races and essentially give control of government back to the Democrats. As an example, let's take a hypothetical. Let's say that Donald Trump wins the nomination, which is very likely. The majority of the party will fall in line and support him, but there are definitely a couple of candidates who won't. Take, for example, Chris Christie. He is vehemently opposed to the former president and has openly stated multiple times that he will not support Donald Trump. Now, currently he's polling about 2-3%, to so not very well, but let's say that even after Trump gets the nomination, Chris Christie continues to attack him. That 2-3% of Republican voters might go along with him and say, you know what? Yeah, we can't support Trump either. Now, they might not vote for Biden, they might vote third party, they might choose not to vote at all, but regardless of that decision, if they're not voting for the Republican candidate, that could be enough votes to make or break certain key elections in swing states like Pennsylvania and Georgia, effectively giving the win to President Biden because the Republican Party wasn't unified among itself, let alone trying to get moderate or independent voters. And this is going to have impacts on down-ballot races as well. And with Republicans looking to maintain their very slim majority in the House and try to take the Senate, any dissent from within the party could prove really problematic depending on who the candidates in these various down-ballot races end up being and which wing of the party they're more aligned with. Now, of course, the other question is, will these loyalty pledges work? And the answer is almost certainly no, as there's no real way to enforce them. Let's go back to our hypothetical where Trump is the nominee and Chris Christie is refusing to support him. What can the GOP do to Chris Christie? Not much, as he is engaging in protected First Amendment political speech. They could issue a motion of censure, but that's just essentially an angry letter where they go, Shame on you, you signed the pledge. We're not very happy with the fact that you're violating it, please stop. And it doesn't really carry any weight to it. Additionally, they could kick Christie out of the party, but that would essentially be institutionalizing the fracturing of the Republican Party that these loyalty pledges were designed to prevent in the first place, so just a little bit counterintuitive. At the end of the day, I think a lot of national Republicans and state Republicans at this point are just crossing their fingers and hoping that everybody remembers the 11th commandment of Reagan, which is, thou shalt not speak ill of other Republicans, and that they can make it through this election cycle and they'll deal with this problem later. However, given the increasing turmoil and distrust among the various factions of the Republican Party, I don't really think a loyalty pledge is going to be enough to prevent the breakdown of party unity. Think about it.